thou not known? Hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that has no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint.
choir is coming to you singing How Great Thou Art.
choir. It's coming back to you singing Joy Bells.
Edward Clark, along with our choir, is coming to tell you by way of song, Jesus, you are the center of my joy. Center of my joy, all that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment, hope for all. I do, oh Jesus, you're the center of my joy, when I've lost my direction, you're the compass for my way, you're the fire and light when nights are long and cold in sadness you are the laughter that shadows all my fears when i'm all alone your hand is there to
tuned to radio station AM 1000, WLUP, and WYCA 92.3 on your FM dial. This is the first church of deliverance, the spiritual church of love and faith. We are located at 4315 South Wabash Avenue in Chicago, Illinois, founded by the Reverend Clarence H. Cobbs. If you've been inspired by this service or have been spiritually uplifted, we invite you to call us right now. Our telephone number is area code 312-373-7700. That's area code 312-373-7700. The next speaking voice. We did have your radio minister, our beloved pastor, the Reverend Eugene D. Gray. It is a privilege to come to you again at this hour and tell you that there is no other name given under heaven whereby men can be saved other than the name of Jesus. And to tell you that I love you, you and even you. And it makes no difference what you think of me, but it does make a difference what I think of you. I cannot allow hate, prejudice, deceit, and all the things which separate men from God keep me from knowing. And because I know, I want you to know as I know, that Jesus is the light of the world. What a blessing in Jesus we found. When I approached the lectern tonight, I said, my God, the choir has so overwhelmed me, I'm lost for words. But they have really sang the gospel. And I pray that you have gotten the message that Jesus saves and he brings joy, great joy, to your soul. We are happy to come to you again at this 11 o'clock hour. And as we come in this service of thanksgiving and praise, we pray that you will recognize and realize your blessings in the Lord and from the Lord. God bless each of you who've written this week and for your contributions we are eternally grateful. Thank you for your calls that are coming in now from Danville, Robbins. Thank you, I'm glad to hear from you. Cincinnati, Ohio. Yes, River Grove, Illinois. 
God bless my family in Bloomingdale, Illinois. And each of you who are calling in even now and who have written in this week, God bless you. The word for today and for a lifetime of believers is redemption. In our Holy Communion service this morning, I wanted my family not just to think about his death, but think about the result of his dying. For the result of his dying was redemption of mankind from the destruction that he had brought upon himself by disobedience. We believe in the spiritual church that man makes his own conditions as he obeys nature's physical and spiritual laws. And from the beginning and in Genesis is taught the fall of man being seduced Tempted by Satan, he fell from where he was and where God had placed him. But thanks be unto God for his unfailing love. For he loves his creatures and his creation with an everlasting love. And I want you to know that tonight, Christians. And you who don't believe, I want you to know it. I want you to think on these words on your way because truly God is love and he expresses that love in all that is manifested in the lives of those who believe him. Deli re redemption rather is to deliver by paying a price and God being perfect Perfection demands perfection, and nothing less. The offerings that were offered up by the Levitical priests, even some of the priests who offered the offerings defiled the offerings, and they weren't sufficient. As a little boy, I was told a story in church that Jesus said in heaven, prepare me a body. If that was the conversation, I'm glad. But I'm much more gladder because of John 3.16. When man fell, sin became a universal situation. And the consequence of death became a universal situation. But John 3.16 came and delivers most of us out of the doubt of fear and disbelief. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but should have everlasting life. And to those of you and those of us who receive this great message of truth, tonight have life and we have it more abundantly. For when we came to consider the state that we were in and could not deliver ourselves or redeem ourselves, somebody had to pay the price. And he who made us, he's whose idea we are in expression. He set the plan in order, even in Genesis. For he said, the seed of the woman shall bruise you talking to Satan, who was one of the most beautiful and subtle beasts of the, of the field. But Satan got into him, and he was made into the form of a subtle serpent. And for this pronouncement that the heel of the seed of the woman would bruise his head was a prophecy of the coming of Christ. And so it is today, I, I want to put him in your thinking because of the sin that is rampant in our world today. Nation against nation, son against father, father against son, mother against daughter, even destroying one another, not only with their 
conduct it, but taking their lives, that which don't belong to them. And even with the trials and tribulations that the Christian is going through, I want you to look up and live. Because God told us from the beginning through the, through the gospel that when you see these signs, look up, for your redemption draws nigh. And tonight I want your mind centered on the Redeemer and on the redemptive work of Jesus Christ in your life. For you and we who were subject to death and a penalty of sin are now set free through Jesus Christ and the redemptive work of God and Jesus on the cross. We are set free from the law of sin and death. We've evolved in the faith to the point to know that if in this life only we have hope, we are of all most men most miserable. But thanks be unto God, we know that one day the change will come. There's going to be a change made in your life that you can't do nothing about and you need somebody. You need a power greater than you are to sustain you and see you through the change. And that power is in Jesus. For if you can believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is the Christ and that God raised him from the dead, you can be saved. And that's what I've come to tell you tonight, that you can be saved. You have a Redeemer. And I want the redeemed of the Lord to say so. Everyone who's been redeemed of the Lord, let me hear you say yes. yes. Let me hear you say yes. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. You have a song to sing in your heart that the angels can't sing. I've been redeemed. I'm redeemed. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus, he took me in. And just a little talk with him made everything all. And your Redeemer lives. I want you to be like Job, steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your reward is sure. Though they slay me, yet will I trust him. For I know that I will see him in my body, not in this physical body, but I know that after a while, I'll have to take off this shell. I'll have to swap time for eternity. He's got something else better prepared for me. It hadn't been scarred. It hadn't been duped. It hadn't been scarred. But I know. And I know tonight, I know enough tonight, I want you to know that your Redeemer lives. And if he lives in you, say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. In your hospital room, I want you to tell the doctor, I know that my Redeemer lives and he lives in me. I know he heals. I know he saves. I know he delivers. soul today. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. As Snooky used to say to thousands of people who came through these doors, I say again tonight, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Your Redeemer lives.
want you to read it this week. Psalm 107, verse 2. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Tell the devil he's a liar. Can't hold me fast. Come time to worship God in the spirit of giving of our broadcast worship offering. As God has prospered you, won't you give? This is our faith ministry, not endowed, not sponsored by man, but sponsored through man as God touches hearts and they give. As the usher shall come to you in the sanctuary, won't you give? Mail your gifts to the uh, to the church this week. The announcements. Yeah. The announcements for the week. We'll announce the home going. Mrs. Juanita Jennings, daughter of our own trustee Herman Charlton. Services will be held on Tuesday, August 8th. The review will be at 6 o'clock p.m. at the Guy and Allen Funeral Home, 2959 West 11th Avenue in Gary, Indiana. Service will be held on Wednesday, August 9th at 10 o'clock a.m. The St. Monica and Luke Catholic Church, 645 Rhode Island Avenue in Gary, Indiana. We announce the home going of Irene Barnes Calloway, the sister of Julia Foster, a member of Group 27 of our church, serves be held at the A.A. Rainer Funeral Home, Thursday, August 10th. Visitation will be at 7 o'clock until 8. Service will follow from 8 until 9. Burr will be Friday at 10 o'clock a.m. On Saturday, August 19th, our annual church picnic will be held at the Enchanted Forest Amusement Park, Bus will leave our community center at 9.30 a.m. The Health and Social Service Department presents their second monthly seminar on Saturday, August 12th, from 12 o'clock noon to 1 o'clock p.m. in our Children's Church. Linda Tessens, the instructor, Joanne Macon, is director. The subject will be arthritis. On Wednesday, 12 noon, in our Children's Church, the prayer and Bible class will be held. And then on Friday night at 8 o'clock p.m., candlelight and service will be held in our children's church. On next Sunday, August 13th, our children's church will present their annual graduation service at 3 o'clock p.m. in our children's church. All graduates will be honored from Levi Riches, as the minister in charge. The Universal Foundation for Better Living Incorporated and the Reverend Johnny Coleman, Pastor Christ Universal Temple, presents Making New Discoveries, Panorama of Truth, 1989, at the Hyatt Regency Hotel, 151 East Wacker Drive, on August 6th through the 10th. Among the participants this week will be two of our own daughters from First Deliverance while worshiping with us tonight in the sanctuary, Carolyn Hill from Los Angeles, California, and our own Maddie B. Thornton Cradell from Houston, Texas. With the joy of having my two daughters home present with me, also my son is here, Bishop Robert Smith from St. Louis, Missouri, who's been carrying on a revival on the west side. I want him to come and say good evening. And I want to compliment Dr. Johnny Coleman on her panorama of truth. God bless you. Bishop Smith. To God our Heavenly Father and to our pastor, Father Dr. Gray, we are happy to be here and once more and again just to worship God in spirit and in truth. I'm happy to be here tonight for my day is not complete until I stop by First Deliverance. I pray that you will pray for me that God might use me to his own will and glory. The Lord bless you.
long as I live and trouble rise, I'll hasten to thy throne. For I love the Lord. Don't you love him? Don't you love the Lord? He said, love the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Eternal God, our Father, in thy presence and in thy sight and in the presence of these witnesses, we acknowledge you knowing that as we acknowledge you in all our ways, you direct our path. We thank you, Father, for this day that you've given us blessed in all of its ways and perfect therein. We thank you, O oh God, for a mind to worship you and for the presence of your love in our hearts. We bless you, O oh God, for those who have taken time out today to say thank you, God, in their various churches and places of worship all over the land and country. Bless every minister of the gospel and every pastor, especially, oh God, you know. You know all about it. You called us. You qualified us. You anointed us. And oh God, we know that you will take care. As you open our mouths, we pray that you will have sanctified and consecrated us and filled us with the presence of your Holy Spirit and its power. That every word that goes through will have its desired effect upon the hearts of men and women and in their lives. We're living in perilous times, we know that. But we're, we have joy in our hearts and peace in our minds because of your presence. Oh God, we thank you for those who are in the hospitals tonight and those who are incarcerated, who've turned their dials to listen in at this hour and to be present with us in spirit. We thank you, oh God, because right now you're healing, saving, and delivering. Regardless of the situations that mankind gets himself involved in, we know that you're always there to rescue the perishing. We thank you, Father, for your spirit, for your spirit that quickens our mortal bodies and makes us to know that we are alive in you. Now, oh God, we thank you for somebody that don't know you tonight, somebody that knows you not in the pardon of their sins. And we pray that your preached word will get through, that you will quicken their pure minds, Stir up their pure mind, oh God, and give them understanding. May they know and recognize that you're the only truth there is, the only power and presence there is, and in you we live, move, and have our being. Now bless First Church of Deliverance. Bless those who came today and those who did not. You know the reasons. You know the whys and the wherefores. Bless our coming in and our going out from this time forth and even forevermore. Bless those under the sound of my voice and in these, within these walls. And we'll be careful to give your name the praise through Jesus Christ our Lord as you heal, save, and deliver. In the name of Jesus, amen. Yes. I surrender all. <clears throat> Carl Overton.
bless your choir. God bless your music department. God bless each of you friends who've come to visit with us tonight and worship with us. May I see any friends that are here for the first time, any visitors for the first time. May you stand please and may God bless you. Reverend Dumas, I hadn't seen you. God bless 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 you, young man. Amen. God bless you. It's a blessing 
to end our day praising God from whom all blessings flow. Yeah, come on. Yes. Somebody somewhere surrendered tonight, knowing that their Redeemer lives, and because He lives, we have life. I surrender. Someone lost some keys. If you come to me after service, you may retrieve them. Yes. Yes, I surrender all. Let's say it together. before we recess for the benefit of those who will send this week for this tape for the tape has not ended when the red light comes on and I'd like to say for, to them that wherever you play this tape you will receive a special blessing your eyes will be open. I don't mean 2020 vision. I mean something that you yourself cannot visualize with your physical sight. Yes, but behind the eyes that you see in the mirror, there are other eyes. And God is going to let you see your way through. God is going to let you see before you an open door. Don't doubt it. Just believe it. And receive it. It's yours. God's got it. If you love him, you can get it. Amen. God's got it, and I love it, and I know I can get it. <laughs> For if I walk uprightly, no good thing will it withhold from me. Come on. Praise God from whom all blessings flow.